Hello and welcome back to Resident Evil Remake Wii Jill 2002 Part 6 ish. Revelations. Uh, <laughs> Revelations. Revenge. Oh, wait, that's another game. Yeah, wait, yeah, no, now we're getting confused. Uh, By the way, earlier we we mentioned that the only game Barry was playable in was Revelations 2. That's not true. <gasps> Barry is uh, the main character of Resident Evil Gaiden for the Game Boy. Oh, for fuck's sake. Back to that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a game. It's a game. So, you know how in Undertale, when you try to attack someone, there's that bar that goes left and right? Yeah. And you have to land it in the middle. Yeah. That's how you fight enemies in Resident Evil Gaiden. Oh. And um, when they attack you during a battle is completely random. So they can oh. attack you literally the second a battle begins. And you won't be able to deal enough damage to kill them immediately. Awesome. Sounds like quality game. game. Sounds like a game we're gonna play. I mean, honestly... Probably. <laughs> <laughs> also, all of the uh, character portraits, they're... They're bizarre. <laughs> like, for some... Leon's in the game. Oh, okay. And, um... It looks like his screenshot was just... Or his uh, portrait was just a screenshot of his model from Resident Evil 2... <laughs> it crushed down to a Game Boy color screen. He looks like a Muppet. Awesome. Yeah, we got the music. I forgot what this is for. Uh, you play the music and it opens the door, and then you put the crests and you get the gold crest, so you gotta switch it with the wood crest. Oh and my god, then... it's just like Resident Evil 5's DLC. <laughs> also, I am really, really bad at sight reading. Like, I literally always have been. I know people who are good at sight reading. But who can just stare at it and just play it perfectly? Because in Chris's playthrough, we find out that if you play it wrong, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> so, Jill, I guess, is just a fucking musical genius. No, she is. That's... I think she's played Moonlight Sonata before. Probably. Because she does it again in 5. <laughs> Only it's a quick time event. Oh. And you can fuck it up. Oh, this is the guy who knows the secrets of the mansion. Ah. 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 Said Sir Spencer. By the way, Sir Spencer's alluded to in some of these notes, but what the fuck did he even do? Uh, Spencer is one of the people who found the progenitor virus, which they used to create the T virus. He's the founder of Umbrella. Hmm. Oh, November 13th. That was almost today. It the was. Hair By the way, universe. Ariel, do you know what today is? November 15th? <laughs> <laughs> today is the 10th anniversary. Wait. Is it 10th or 15th? Something's anniversary between 10 and 15 of Shadow the Hedgehog. Oh, boy. Well, let's see. I was in grade school still when it came out. So, 15. Okay. That makes sense. I figured it was 15. Yeah. Because I specifically remember going to the library with my friend who liked Shadow and Sanic. And we 
found a magazine that had a, a full page advertisement for Shadow the Hedgehog. And I think he ripped the page out. <laughs> and I was like, dude, you can't do that, it's a library! And he was like, well, I already did. <laughs> Which, to be fair, this is also the same kid who, to prove that Nokia phones were indestructible, whipped his Nokia at a tree and broke it. <laughs> so, you know. That sounds like a normal Sonic fan. Yeah, honestly? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> you know, one of these days, we need to just do a complete reading of the comic <laughs> Tales Gets Trolled. Okay. <laughs> People try to liken it to, like, Sonichu, but, uh, it's a lot more entertaining. Okay. Let's see. And you know what, what the clock puzzle reminds me of? What? Eternal Darkness. Yeah. But it was only one, and it was, I don't think it was even a full-size clock. But that's okay. Because I liked it. Oh my god, what the <laughs> fuck. <laughs> uh, tails. <laughs> as horrible as that artwork I just sent you is, it's... It's undeniably, unbelievably expressive. I mean, yeah, it's it's not. I mean, it's not great, but it's not awful. Yeah. It's not again. It's not Sonichu. <sighs> it's like Tales Against Trolled has been in, being has been uh, under work for like over a decade. <laughs> it's really long. <laughs> oh. One of those. I used to read a lot of web comics. I don't so much now. I feel like most people don't now. Yeah. Or maybe we're just old. Uh, maybe. But also, it's just too much work. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. I'm just like, eh, yeah, I could go and catch up on this comic I haven't read for years, but I also could just do something else. True. I threw in a pig. Oh, no. Not the pig. Scott woke me up. He's wearing a protective suit. Oh, no, it's been an accident in the basement lab. I just knew something like this would happen. I never sleep. Even on holiday. What the fuck? What the hell holiday is like the first. the second week of May? <laughs> well, no, he's just saying in general they don't sleep on holidays. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I'm swole and itchy. And the dogs were quiet. Ah, oh, no. They ran away. Also, for pro, pro tip, first of all, somebody else should be checking on these dogs besides Mr. I don't like them, so I'm not gonna feed them for three days. Yeah. Second, second of all, fuck this guy. Seriously. <laughs> like, you know, I may be one of those people that likes animals more than humans. That being said, I'll still fight for human rights, but... Fuck you, and feed your fucking dogs. <laughs> oh no, itchy tasty. Can we talk about how stupid it is that this guy is transforming into a zombie? He's basically lost his sanity, like all of his human control, and he's murdering and eating people, but he still somehow has enough cognition to write itchy tasty. Yeah, it's, that's bothered me for a while. Uh, cause it's like, like the first part's okay, like, oh, Scott came in, Scott stupid, I ate his face. Okay, fine, you were still like half, half, like, conscious 
at that point, I guess, but yeah, the four itchy tasty is just, it's like, what? Yeah, it's pretty stupid. Yeah. Oh boy, a battery pack. That, that sure was worth coming in here for. I mean, where <laughs> else would you find one? I mean, all over the place. <laughs> Ariel, don't reason. you know that umbrella, the number one directive in the Umbrella Handbook, in case of outbreak, make sure to take all of your batteries with you. <laughs> well, I mean, that would make sense. But, nah. Oh, so, um, eh, this would make more sense to bring up later, but eh, I'll mention it now. So there are three gems in the game, because the third gem is for a different puzzle. So that one needs the blue and yellow gem. But if you put in the red gem, for shits and giggles, like I did, it uh, rains snakes upon you. Ariel. Yes. In the original Resident Evil, the only gems you need in the entire game are the blue and red gems, and they're for the tiger, and they put that there just to fuck with people who played the first game. <laughs> That's kind of great, though. <laughs> Which, I mean, it, it, I guess that continued with Resident Evil 2 Remake, because the liquor hallway, in your first playthrough, there's no liquor, and in the second playthrough, there is. Which, that's just rude. <laughs> <laughs> and Raining Snakes isn't, okay. Raining Snakes is rude, but it's not a fucking liquor. <laughs> <laughs> Like, expecting a liquor and there not being one is like, okay, alright, cool, let's keep going. Expecting there to not be a liquor and then one shows up. That's just mean. I mean, I guess. It's kind of mean that you only have a pistol at that point. Yeah. They're just but, uh, I'd, I'd also like to, uh, ask the question... Who in Umbrella put those snakes there? I... That trip... Wait. No. Yeah, I mean, it might have been that Trevor guy. But why? Eh. Uh, <laughs> why'd they do anything? Sheer absolute boredom. <laughs> Can we talk about how... Every horror game, you have to find keys to open doors. But the odds of you actually finding a key for the door you need to go through in real life are, like, almost zero. Eh. They'd usually eh. be on the other side of the door. Eh. It depends. It, it really does depend. And how come every However, door in this mansion... Okay, not every door. How come so many of the doors in this mansion are locked except the front door? Uh, because it's a trap. But, but no, that's stupid. Oh, so I accidentally put it the wrong way. How could you? Uh, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> um... But no, I mean, you and I both know it literally was a trap. I mean, yeah, but still. Yeah, would, I mean, some people just It would make never way more sense to just murder all of stars outside via dog. Yeah, but that would have made sense, I guess. Shit, I was going to say something else before the stupid water. Uh, oh, ah. keys. Yes. So, one of the big things that bugs me is that this is an older house with older locks and older style keys. You know how easy it is to pick those locks? Very, and that's why we have the Master of Unlocking, who doesn't do any of that. Yeah, she only pl she only can pick the locks of the one that says Old Key, which means that they're even older than these keys. But at that point, you could probably just kick the door and it would be open. But at the same time, this actually isn't an old mansion, because it was made specifically for Umbrella experiments. Eh, yeah, those, 
those still aren't modern keys. Yeah, but if it's not an old mansion, though. They could have just made them in the style of an old mansion. I mean, I don't know if you've seen a modern key I, or a modern keyhole. I, 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 in fact, have. <laughs> so, the only way that would work is if they set it up so that the rectangle parts of the key that would normally be used to unlock an old door was the entirety in shape of a modern key, which we can literally examine them and see that it is not. True. But maybe it's super advanced scanning technology, Ariel. In 1998? Um, yes. Have you seen the underground umbrella labs? I have! They're running Windows 98! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm pretty sure it's not even Windows 98. It's MS-DOS. I mean, there's some visual stuff, so, it, you know, it's probably like... Let's see, what's before... What's between DOS and 98? I, let's see. I can't tell you. Uh, I'd have to ask my brother. He's full of useless knowledge like that. <laughs> I could Google it, but that would make sense. And therefore, I will not do it. Good job. Yeah. You definitely learned this layout, the layout of this mansion pretty fucking quick with all the... Backtracking. Find the item box, get back to the item box. Yeah. Which, definitely more so for Chris. Like, way more. Man, if this was Resident Evil 4, 5, or 6, you could just jump down there. Yeah, but also, as, as, a, as a human, <laughs> which we've already established that I am, do you really want to jump down an entire story? Ariel, we've established that the main characters in Resident Evil games definitely aren't humans. <laughs> I don't know, Jill still seems pretty human at this point. Maybe. I don't know. But she has been bit a couple times, so she might already be We infected. played Remake 3, Ariel, and that's not too long after this game. Uh, technically, but... This is the remake. You know Jill's still on an exploding train in the original three, right? An exploding train? What? The train explodes. Still? Yeah. D that was in the original. <laughs> to be fair, I haven't gotten to that point yet in my play. Do you know how you can survive? You can either, uh... uh Pull the brake, which the train still crashes. Or, you can choose my favorite option, which is jump out the window. <laughs> <laughs> time. Yeah, ob I mean, obviously. It's. I love how the snake is already looking like we attacked it a little bit, or a lot bit. <laughs> Wait, is Barry helping? Ah, uh, this is Richard. Oh. Richard helps if you save him. Uh, I, I can barely tell who it was. Anyway, you don't have to fight it, though. I'm aware. However, I have to wait for Richard to die. Oh. You shouldn't have helped him. Yes, I should have. There's a reason why I have to wait for Richard to die, and it's not that I can't leave with him there. Oh. <laughs> oh, is it cutscene? Nah. He has the assault shotgun. <laughs> oh. So you just want his stuff. I mean, t for me, in this situation, no. I would be trying to keep him alive. However, he just does this shit. <laughs> but why, though? No. 
I don't know. He could have just pushed you. He could have, yes, but that wouldn't have been as epic, I guess. I'm pretty sure a snake can't swallow that quick. Probably not. He it does take them a while. Yes. I never did. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That was funny. <laughs> Yes, we've been poisoned by that giant snake that we have no wounds from. Wait, did it hit you? Yes. Oh. That's all it takes. But also, I just want to say that Richard dying to the snake, while stupid, at least makes sense. In Chris's playthrough, if you save him here, you... <laughs> He shows up in the aqua ring. Is that what the shark sharks are? Yes. Do they just jump and out like, and eat them? How, how did you get here? <laughs> Not only how did you get here, how did you get in the middle of all of the sharks alive? Only for you to again jump into one of their mouths in an attempt to push it, push Chris out of the way. <laughs> What? Because they just really wanted him to die in a, as stupid a way as possible. Yeah, I guess so. Chris's playthrough like, has a lot of stupid shit. I mean, okay. I would say both of them have a lot of stupid shit. But also, Chris is just apparently canonically not as intelligent. <laughs> In the nicest way possible, because even though I don't have a chemistry degree, if I see some chemicals and instructions on how to mix the chemicals, I don't go, Psh, I don't know what to do with this. 